In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to create a shoulder angel using motion tracking in After Effects. So I have these two files. Um, one is of one of my students walking around, and we're going to track his shoulder using the motion tracking option. So he moves around a bit. Um, and then I have this other student who we have, we have them both green screen, but this student is going to be on the shoulder. So the first thing that I want to do is let's use key light to uh, green screen uh, to chroma key him out uh, the background out of this. So I have this green screen set up. Um, I'm going to go, I, I drag this down into my um, timeline to create a composition. And so that's in there, and you can see my computer's a little slow, so it's got some adaptive uh, resolution. I'm going to uh, render this. Okay, what I did was hit spacebar to let it play, and you can see this little green bar represents um, an area that's been rendered, so it can run it faster without having to do the adaptive resolution, where it lowers the resolution a lot temporarily to show it you, uh, to you in real time. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to have to green screen him out here. I'm going to click on effects and presets over on this side and the uh, chroma key that I'm going to use is key light. So if I just type in key here, um, you should be able to find the key light. Uh, if I pick that up and drag it onto the object in the timeline, I can now see key light in the effect controls. And I'm going to use the eyedropper to choose some of my green screen to select. Now to see how effective it is, I'm going to change the view from final result to, uh, let's do screen mat. And what I want is a really sharp white line between, um, the white area is what is going to be kept and the black is going to be what is like removed, uh, which is keyed out. And this gray area, anything that's gray is going to be kind of somewhat uh, keyed out so it'll be semi-transparent. I want this entire green screen to be completely black and for his uh, outline to be a lot sharper. So I'm going to have to do some um, messing around with some of the settings in here. If I twirly down on screen mat, I can slide these settings to see if I can get a better one. So that clip black to the right, I can click on any of these blue lines and drag them. Um, if I drag that one over it's a little tough with adaptive resolution, so I'm actually going to, where it says fast previews, I'm going to turn it off so I always get just final quality. And I can slide this. I don't want to slide it too far as it becomes like that, but there should be some settings in here that work. And I'm not worrying about these edges, the outside parts here, because I'm just going to mask those in a little bit. I just need the area around uh, the student to be sharp. So that seemed to work pretty well. If I play it, it looks pretty sharp all around. Um, and my settings here, I kind of just wing it. But I've got 76 for black and 85 for white. And now I can come back here and change the view back from screen mat to final result. And that will let me see that he's actually successfully cut out of this. Now, while I'm still in this key light, I want to create a mask, which will allow me to basically draw a shape where everything outside of the shape will also be keyed or removed. So I'm going to click on this pen tool, and I'm going to use the pen tool. I want this mask, he stretches his arms out sometimes, so I want it outside in this outside portion to be larger. And then I'll come in here so I don't get the desks or anything. And once I close off this shape, anything outside of it will also be masked in addition to my key light. And so once I've done that, I can come back and press V or come back to my selection tool. And now I have him successfully cut out of the scene. And I can uh, hold down shift while I grab the corner and shrink him down. For now, at least, I'm going to lock that layer and turn off the eyeball on it down in the layers of my timeline so that I don't have to mess with that. Now I can come back to effects, so I'm going to go back to my project, I mean project not effects, and bring in my other subject which I can drag down to the timeline and now I have him. Now it's very easy to do this where if you double click on a layer um, you actually get not the entire composition but a view of just that layer so keep that in mind that's going to happen on purpose here when we do the motion tracking but sometimes it's very confusing you think something should be happening and it doesn't look like it is here in the composition it's because you're not actually looking at the composition you're just looking at that specific layer so if I exit out of that and I exit out of this one when I'm on the one that says composition that's my overall um, every layer shown together except for layers that have been turned off with the eyeball 
So now I'm going to motion track his movement. So I want my other student to be here, but to follow along as the student moves around. And so I'm going to use motion tracking. We'll go to animation, and down here near the bottom is an option called track motion. When I select it, you'll see that the tracker appears in the bottom right, and that now I'm in the specific layer for that, and there's this little track pointer. Now these are two boxes. The inside box is um, what is going to be tracked, and the outside box is how far out it can go to search for that. And what I'm looking for is a high contrast, a big difference between light and dark, or a big difference between other colors, because what it's really tracking are the colors. And um, if I drag this out, it'll search farther, but that can cause problems too, so it's really kind of touch and go. You just have to try a couple of times, generally, depending on how big or small these are. And if I click in the middle here, by the way, it thinks I want to move the center point. So I want to click inside of this box, but not on the plus sign. And I'm trying to find a place that has high contrast. So I think a place that works really well is the point of the crease in this shirt here, where it's light and dark. So we're getting a little bit of the transition from his shoulder to the green screen and also we're getting that transition from the dark part of the shirt crease and the lighter part and so I'm gonna try that one and see what happens. The way we can test it out is down here in the tracker I can hit this play button where it says analyze and if I click that you should see now oh see it already got knocked off so I'm gonna stop it and reset it and try again and it really is trial and error uh, maybe a larger track area This worked for me before, so hopefully it'll work again, but I'm going to pick a somewhat larger track area and a little bit of a larger search area and see if it can follow it. And it seems to be doing pretty well. Um, even the best tracking, sometimes you'll have to go in by hand, but what it's setting are keyframes uh, at every frame where it moves, which in this case is probably pretty much every frame. Looks like we lost it a little bit there, which is going to cause some problems, so I'll reset again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try that other portion here where that, that um, line of color is on his shirt and see if maybe that would be a better place to track. Oh, and I also want to track from the beginning here, so I should probably go back to frame zero. Maybe right there. Let's see. It really is a little... You just kind of find a place that will work. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge both of these a little bit too. And sometimes if you have, if your subject turns, that confuses the tracking. The, the thing that you're tracking basically has to be consistently, um, it has to look the same. Otherwise it has a very difficult time tracking it. Looks like this is going okay so far. And you can see it can, depending on how fast your computer is, it can do this very quickly or very slowly. Um, it's kind of sliding around a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pause it and see if I can find a good place for it to track. Okay, looking back over it, I think actually this logo, which is really high contrast, the very big difference between light and dark, that might actually be a really good place to track it. So I'm going to try it here. So I put that track point around it. And it I mean, even if something gets blurry, that can cause issues too. So the motion tracker is very picky, but if you can find a good place to track, um, as long as um, that Adidas symbol moves at the same rate as the shoulder, which is where I want to put the other student, this should work out just fine. So I'm hoping that this will work. It's pre staying pretty consistent. I'll let it go all the way through, and then I'll unpause again. Okay, it finished. It shifted a little bit, but... I think it'll be okay for the purposes of what we're doing. I'd probably go in and try to refine it again. But what you're seeing each of these boxes is the keyframe it set for the motion of following that, that point in the tracker. Now, I could attach my other student directly to this track point by going to Edit Target and choosing the other movie file. The problem with that, I'm going to cancel that. The problem with that is it's going to cause my other student to be centered basically exactly on that point. But I don't want him right here. I want him over here. So the way that I can create that connection, even though they're not directly in the same spot, is by using kind of an intermediary, a, a middleman. And that is, 
a null object. So if I come here to layer and say new, there is an option called null object. And a null object is basically just an invisible nothing. If I go back to the composition, you'll see it's represented by a square, a red square. And it's basically just a nothing that I can attach things to. So now if I come back to him uh, and click back on that, uh, I'm in the layer, I'm back on the movie file, so my tracker should be available again. Now when I edit target, I'm going to say that the target is that null object that I created. And when I say OK, the last step I have to do is apply it. And when I click apply, this screen appears that asks me do I want to apply it to both x and y dimensions or just x and y or x or y on their own and I do want x and y so I can just use the default and click OK and now when I come back to the composition what you'll see is that null object the representation of that null object also follows along with that point. It might be hard to see until I, I hit spacebar to render it you can see that that null object is following along with that tracker that was tracking his logo. And now what I can do is I'm going to turn on, uh, I'll go ahead and lock this layer that the, the bigger student is on and, and lock that and I'm going to make my smaller student here. So I'm going to eyeball that again and if I click on this outside bounding box I can shrink him even more by holding down shift and put him on his shoulder. And now the last thing that I need to do is attach this movie file to that null object. And I'm going to use a, a parent-child relationship here. That's what these lassos are for. I can pick this up, hold down my mouse on it, and drag this lasso to the null object. And now you can see under it says its parent is null 1. That means they'll move the same. So now when I play this, when I and I'll, I'll go ahead and render it first, which will take a little while. You can see that as one of them moves, the shoulder student will also move with that. So I'm going to pause it as it's. Uh, All right, now that it's rendered, we should be able to see it in real time here. Yeah, that's good. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But I don't like it. <laughs> we'll just get a couple of seconds out of it. Okay. Basically, anything I can make in After Effects or any other program, I can now attach to this. So I could do text, too. I can make a new text layer. I could type in here. Put it right there, and I'm going to also make no one the parent of my text. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But I don't like it. <laughs> we'll just get a couple of seconds out of it. Okay, a little bit more. Give me something else. It's embarrassing. I'm giving you George <laughs> Lucas direction here. Make Do it better. Give me something. Give me more. Behind uh, motion tracking and After Effects.